In this lesson, we're going to look at the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Uh, the postulates for this are going to be concerned with what we would call an ideal gas, and at the end we'll look at ideal gases versus real gases. The first postulate of the kinetic molecular theory is that gases are mostly empty space. So if we were to look at a microscopic, a really, really, really microscopic image of the gases in this balloon, it'd be something like the little video that you see running down in that black box. At zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure, to give you an idea, one atmosphere of pressure is about what we feel around us daily. One mole of gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. Now, we can say that gases are mostly empty space because although the volume is 22.4 liters, if we look at the volume of each individual oxygen molecule, we'll see that they only have a volume of about 10 to the negative 29th. So the actual space taken up by one mole of oxygen molecules really is only about 9 times 10 to the negative 6th liters. Well, that means that most of that volume then is going to be empty space. So the space would be equivalent to around 22.399991 liters. So when we talk about gases, we really are talking about these really small particles. So the volumes that they take up are much larger than what the actual volume the particles take up. The second postulate is that they are in constant random straight line motion. Pretty much the postulate says it all. If you follow one of these particles in the video, they're going to travel in a straight line. Once they hit something, they're going to bounce off and they're going to continue to travel in a straight line just in a different direction. Another postulate says that collisions are elastic. Now, what that means is that the total energy that the molecules have that are involved in a collision isn't going to change. So if you have two molecules that are going to collide, when they collide, the total energy before and after the collision takes place is still going to be the same. You could have a molecule gain energy from a faster moving molecule. You could have another molecule lose energy, but in the end, the total amount of energy is going to stay the same. If this didn't occur, if the collisions caused losses in energy, we would eventually have everything that turn into a liquid or even a solid because of that loss of energy. Another postulate of this, and remember we're dealing with what's called ideal gases, is that there are no intermolecular forces between molecules. Another postulate tells us why gases have pressure. Well, as we saw previously, they can collide with each other, but they're also going to collide with the container that they may be contained in. The collisions that they have with the walls of the container are going to exert a force. That force divided by the area of the container, surface area of the container, can be translated what we call pressure. The more collisions that you have, the more force you're going to have, the greater the pressure. Also, the more less area you have, you're going to, even if you have the same number of molecules, if you have less area, your pressure is going to increase because those collisions are going to be occurring over a smaller area. And probably one of the most important postulates is dealing with what we call temperature and kinetic energy. Temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy. In a sense, we could actually say that temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is the energy of the motion of molecules. And the equation that sums that up is given here as kinetic energy equals one half the mass times the velocity of the molecules squared. The relationship then between the mass and the volume is that if you have molecules traveling at the same velocity, then the more massive molecule will have more kinetic energy. Think of it as a car versus a semi-truck. If you have both of them moving down the highway at the same speed, if there's a collision, the truck is going to have more energy simply because it has more mass. Conversely, if you have molecules that have the same mass, if they have different velocities, 
the one that's moving at a higher velocity is going to be the one that has greater kinetic energy. An example of that would be being hit by a baseball moving at 10 miles an hour versus a baseball moving at 30 miles per hour. Being hit by a baseball at 30 miles per hour is just not going to feel as good as if you got hit by a baseball at 10 miles per hour. One of the things that we have to understand is that not all of the molecules are moving at the same speed. If you watch the video closely, you'll see that some molecules are moving extremely quickly while others are moving much more slowly. All of those particles then are going to total up to give us a total amount of kinetic energy that we have available. The problem is there's too many molecules to measure. Remember, if we had 22.4 liters of gas, that's a mole of molecules. That's 6.022 times 10 to 23rd. Just way too many. So the only way to get around that is to say that temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy. There's no that way that we can measure the kinetic energy of each and every one of those molecules. But we can measure it as an average. Now let's talk about reality. The first statement said that gases are mostly empty space. And that's correct. A little deeper into this when we talk about gases is that we will actually assume that gas particles have zero volume. But that, in reality, is not the case. The second was that gas molecules are in constant random straight line motion. And there's no doubt about that. Another is that the collisions are elastic. In this one, it depends. When we talk about gases at a certain temperature, then that statement is pretty much true. But if we get to temperatures that are low enough, there is going to be a certain amount of energy lost, and that is caused by an effect that we'll see here in just a second, and that is the no intermolecular forces between molecules. This is just flat out wrong. The thing is, is that because there's so much empty space between molecules, we can essentially say that there is very little or no intermolecular forces because the distance between the molecules is so great. Even though they collide, and during that instant there is going to be a certain amount of intermolecular force, at the temperatures we usually deal with, the force of attraction is so small that we can essentially say that there are no intermolecular forces. But in reality, there are. It's why we have liquids, and it's also why we have solids. Collisions with the walls of a container cause pressure. Yes, there's no doubt about that. And then temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy. Basically a true statement because that's how we have defined temperature. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of the system.